hey, guess what's turned up? A 13 grand mountain bike. I'm not even joking. Check this out. This is the new Specialized Levo 2021. This is the S-Works version and it comes in at 13,000 quid. I can't wear this, I'm 49 years old. I'm gonna put this together now and I'll show you what it looks like as soon as I'm finished. And welcome to another episode of How Much with Single Track Magazine. I'm your host, Mark, and I've got the specialised S Works third generation Turbo Levo here, which comes in at a snip at £13,000. I am not even kidding. Well, okay, you knew that anyway because you saw me get this thing out of a box, and I said as soon as I'd built it up, I would show it to you. So here we are. I haven't even ridden it yet. It's not been out for its shakedown ride. So, I mean, <sighs> 13,000 pounds, that's absolutely crazy, isn't it? I mean, there's an old adage, isn't there, that we've all heard before is, you, you can buy a car for that. Well, my first car cost me 300 quid, so that kind of never really worked for me. But the 13,000 pounds, you literally can buy a brand new car. I checked. You can buy a Toyota Igo for 12,500 pounds, 12,690 pounds, on the road, which if you had £13,000 for this would give you enough change for a lot of bags of chips and quite a few bus rides home, as they say. So what's going on? Who's going to buy these? Probably footballers are probably going to look for one of these, aren't they? The sort of person who goes into a bike shop and goes, what's the most expensive bike you've got? I've been party that. I've been in a bike shop when that's actually happened and the guy paid with cash. Anyhow, what Specialized playing at here? That car analogy I just threw out here, that was the bottom of the line I go that 12 and a half thousand. This is not bottom of the line, this is top of the line. You can actually buy an iGo with all the bling for over 20,000 pounds. What's it for? Specialized is showing off. They're showing us what can be done with a bike if money is absolutely no object. Is this a realistic proposition for us to buy? Not really. So I'll run you through some of the features and then maybe we can put into context where that price has come from. Well, first of all, I'm gonna draw your attention to the brakes. Those are Magura's MT7 brakes. Very, very good brakes. Nothing particularly special, but these brakes have the Loic Bruni custom brake levers on them. Now, let me tell you that the levers, just the levers, cost 90 euros. 90 euros, not for the brake, for the lever. We've got carbon everywhere. Specialized carbon, they call it their FACT carbon. And FACT stands for, what does FACT stand for? I've got it here somewhere. Functional Advanced Composite Technology. This is fact 11. Think there's a higher grade for road bikes. In terms of mountain bikes, that's as good as it gets. We've also got a whole heap of SRAM top of the line goodies on here. We've got SRAM XX1 axis shifting, bling. So you don't have a forest of cables to worry about because not only is the shifting wireless, but so is the dropper seat post. Let's give it a go. Whoa, it's quite a return it's got. You've only got three cables at the front. You've got your e-bike controller cable. You've got your brakes, that's it. This particular model has not been set up for UK riding because the cables are running down the wrong side. So it's not quite as neat and tidy as it could be, but we'll forgive Specialized for that. So what else is special? Well, we've got a whole heap of very bling Fox going on too. We've got the Fox factory Kashima coated 38 with grip two damper on the front. We've got the Fox Evol uh, X2 float rear shock. Again, Kashima. it doesn't get any better than that. We've got Roval carbon fiber traverse wheels front and back. Literally, they've gone all out. There is, they've not spared any expense whatsoever on this bike. But that's all the bling stuff on it. This is an e-bike. There's a dog about to walk in front of the camera. That's all the bling. What about the core of it? This is an e-bike. What's different about this? This is generation three. So how does that differ from generation two? The biggest difference you're gonna notice is in the display on the top tube. Now, Specialized have gone down the line with their e-bikes of not cluttering up the cockpit with displays. Instead, what you've got traditionally is a very, very basic, simple display on the top tube, which shows you in 10 increments, little lights that tell you the state of the battery. And also a little round clock type thing that shows you which mode you're in. So either eco 
or trail or boost. They've taken that up a notch and actually created a little LCD display on the top tube, which not only shows you the battery state in terms of percentage, but also tells you the time. One of the other things that you've been able to do with previous versions of the Levo, and you can still do with this, is you can tune it using the specialized mission control app. Dolly, bog off. This allows you to set how much power each of the three modes gives you, not just how much power is put in, but also how much torque it puts in. So you can really make some different adjustments and personalize how the motor works just for you and your type of riding. Well, now you can actually do some of that on the fly using the simple controller on the handlebars. So if you're riding along and you're in trail and all of a sudden the terrain changes or you're in a group ride with people who aren't on e-bikes, you can actually down tune your bike as you're riding. Tech lovers like me, probably going to find that really interesting. Despite that, it's still a really clean and simple system. That's a bloody ice cream van. I shall carry on. So what about the motor? Any differences there? This is the third generation motor. It's a 565 watt motor. That's how much power it can put out. The battery stored away neatly inside the down tube here. This is a 700 watt hour battery. As previous generations, the motor is a bro specialized collaboration. They've improved the internals of the motor. It's quieter. They've strengthened the belt inside because this is a belt driven system. And some previous models have had issues with the reliability of the belt. They've completely re-engineered the belt for the third generation motor. One of the big differences though with this motor is Specialized have really gone to town on the waterproofing. Previous models have had a few issues with waterproofing. I've been testing a Specialized Levo SL. I've had one issue where my app told me that I couldn't ride the bike. I had to dry out the motor because some moisture had got inside the charging port. Took about six hours of just leaving it alone and everything was fine. Really appreciated the app telling me that rather than just stopping. I knew what the problem was and I fixed it. That's great. However, Specialized have decided that they're going to actually really beef up the waterproofing of this motor. And we've actually got redundant levels of sealing built into this motor. Check this out. So over here, the charging port, instead of being accessible directly on the outside of the bike, you now actually have to pull this lever up, open this flap, and you can see that there is the charging cable. You can't get that out yet because you've got to pull this lever down and then pop out the lever from its waterproof housing. And that's where you plug in your charging cable. So there's three levels of sealing going on here. And Specialized think that you can actually ride this thing reliably through river crossings. They're talking full submersion and this thing will still work. There's plenty of moisture around here on the trails. So I'll be putting that one to the test. I just want to have a quick word about the sizing. Specialized don't do extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. They term their sizing in terms of S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6. This model here, this is an S3. Now you could make the mistake of saying, well, that's just medium, which it kind of is for me. I typically will ride a medium bike, but Specialized have decided that what's most important is the actual reach. A short bike is kind of a maneuverable, it's flickable. Uh, a long bike tends to be more stable. You can ride it at speed. So what Specialized have done is the standover across the range is pretty much the same. The difference is in the reach. So if you are a rider that likes to actually ride hard, fast on downhills, you might normally go for a medium, but with the Specialized system, you might go for an S4, which otherwise you might call large, just because of the longer reach. So depending on what style of riding you want, that is what will decide whether you go for an S1 to an S6. Dolly, cough. Another new feature with the Levo this year is the geometry adjust. Now we're all used to flip chips that change the geometry of the bike and usually slacken or steepen the head angle. We've got that on the Levo. Unusually though, it's right at the back. It's down here, just next to the horse link. Flip that chip around and you can change the drop on the bottom bracket, and obviously that's going to slacken the head angle a little bit. However, there's more. On the new Levo, there is now an adjustable headset, which gives you three different head angle adjustments. So combined with the flip chip at the back, that gives you a total of six different geometry combinations. The head angle range goes from 63 and a half to 65 degrees. 
and the flip chip at the back will give you an adjustment that will drop the bottom bracket by about seven millimeters or raise it depending on which setting you have. So that's it. This is a top of the line showing off model. This is probably not the model that you're going to see out on the trails. It's not the one that's going to be the best seller, but that is beside the point. I've got a 13,000 pound bike here and I think I've talked about it enough. It's time to take it out for a ride. Okay, I'm riding with uh, my riding buddy, Vic. She's on her brand new Alloy Turbo Levo SL, which is described by Specialized as two times U, whereas the Turbo Levo is described as four times U. That sort of illustrates the power difference. Okay, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference because of the wind noise you're probably experiencing right now. But the first thing that struck me on this ride is just how quiet this motor is. Whoops. Use the gears there. The axis. Right. I'm actually in eco mode here. Yeah. This is quite a steep climb. One thing I didn't uh, explain in my garden is that the display it does show an awful lot more information now. I don't know if you can see that. Let me just point the camera down as we're riding. But you can see I've got it displaying distance, altitude gain. And if I press the button on the controller, it shows speed. What else? There we go, I've got 79% of the battery left. I'm currently in eco mode. And it's quarter past two in the afternoon. So the, the most remarkable thing I've noticed, just got off-road, first ride on this thing, is just how quiet that motor is and how powerful. Uh, a climb that I've just done, which normally, well, on the Turbo Levo SL, I would do that in either boost or trail. I just went up there, no problem, in eco mode. This thing is so powerful. I'm gonna have to detune it down because it's kicking out too much power for me at the moment. That's remarkable. How was that, dear? good i think my trail is like your boost no the other way around your trail is like my boost yes yes <laughs> i would say that well yeah your motor is i think about 35 newton meters to my 90. yes so mine can certainly kick out a lot more power but that's steady that's me plus 50 percent coming up there yes I'm, I'm quite happy with that <laughs> It's really agile. You don't believe it does not feel like a bike the way as much as it does. 